evening. Welcome to the Danvers Zoning Board of Appeals. Um, I'm going to ask everybody if you have cell phones, turn them off so they're not ringing during the meeting, please. Uh, the agenda for tonight's meeting is up here in front or outside by the door. Um, we um, will be, we have some continued cases. We're going to read them first and then we'll go to the, to the um, rest of the agenda. Um, I want to introduce the board. Um, we have Bob Signetti all the way down to my right. John Bonner, who's going to be our clerk tonight. I'm Becky Kilborn. Um, we have Jeff Sauer, Ken Dervinen, and Corinne Doherty. And um, we, have, we will have five people voting on each case, and I'll tell you who's going to vote on each um, case as we get to it. Um, we also have Rich Maloney from the Building Inspector's Office, and Kathy Archambar, our secretary, <laughs> is on her way. Uh, <laughs> and Rich will do two hats for a few minutes. Um, the procedure for tonight's meeting, we are on TV, so we ask that the, app, we will read, uh, the clerk will read the hearing notice. Then we'll ask the applicant to come up um, to the microphone and present their information um, regarding their case. Um, then the board will ask questions of the applicant, and we'll just go through the board asking questions. And after we do that, we'll go out to the audience for any questions or comments, and then we'll come back to the board for deliberations. And based on what the comments are, I'll give you your options for proceeding um, with, with your case. Um, we have minutes from the last meeting. Can I have a motion to accept those? So moved, Madam Chairman. I'll second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Um, so we're going to start with our first continued case, uh, which is yep. 21 School Street. And just okay. read this. Okay. Madam Chair, <laughs> this is uh, for uh, docket number 194820, Jam 5 Properties, LLC. Requesting a uh, dimensional variance for front side and rear setbacks on a lot area per unit for multifamily housing in accordance with Section 7. Table 2 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaws at 21 School Street. Uh, we are in receipt of a letter uh, due to the time it has taken to get an updated plot plan with the original plans and the setback table information from the plot plan. We are asking to continue this matter to the June 17th meeting. And that's from? And that is from uh, it's Eric Lomas. Attorney. Attorney Eric Lomas. So move, Madam Chairman. All right. I'll second that. All right. And continue to June 17th. All June. in favor? All right. Aye. All right. Thank you. Madam Chair, our next continued case is uh, Danvers Port Yacht Club Marina, LLC, Joseph D. Lorenzo, docket 194813. Requesting a special permit to modify a an existing special permit, uh, docket 13-4465, to install new signage in accordance with section 37 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaws at 107R Elliott Street. Uh, Madam Chair, I think we're in receipt of a letter from Joe D. Lorenzo, on behalf of Danversport Ma Marina, I would like to request a continuance to the June 17th meeting of the Zoning Board of Appeals regarding our request for a modification of special permit docket 19-4813. Can I have a motion? So moved, Madam Chairman. Second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you. Back to you. Madam Chair, our third continued case is Paul Malvich and Jean Dion, docket 17-4817, requesting a variance to allow construction of a duplex on the property with less than required area in accordance with section 2.9, table two of the Danvers Zoning Bylaws at 56 Adams Street. Madam Chair, we are in receipt of a letter from attorney Nancy A. McCann uh, dear board members, uh, board members, on behalf of applicant John M. Thomas Thompson, sorry, trustee, we hereby request this matter be continued without discussion to the board's meeting on June 17th. The applicant is reviewing a possible new option that may eliminate the need for zoning relief. Thank you for your consideration. <coughs> so moved, Madam Chairman. I'll second that. Okay. Thank you. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Okay. Thank you. Okay. 
Okay. Mr. Yeah. Maloney, is Mr. Maloney all caught up? All caught up. <laughs> <laughs> got the tape. Good job. <laughs> you might not be able to read this. <laughs> Madam Chair, this is our first continued case. Gregory J. Maynard, uh, docket 18-4753, requesting a variance and a finding to demolish an existing dwelling and construct a newly single family, new, a new single family dwelling in accordance with section 3.17.1.1.3 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaws at 28 Brentwood Circle. Is there anyone here for this? I drove by there about five o'clock and he was in his driveway, but I didn't get out of my car. Yeah, town, town meeting did vote to uh, give him the land he has to incur all the uh, engineering cost and the cost of the registry deeds. So um, there's not much this board can do until that gets done. Um, so should we just continue? Continue to the next meeting on the 17th, and uh, we'll try to get a hold of him. You may show up. You want to just table it to the end, and you may show up. Okay. Yeah, we can do that. We'll just put it on hold for okay. a while. Okay. We'll go to the next case. Okay. In case he shows up yep. in a while. He could be. Nobody's here, right, from 20 of Brentwood? Okay. Madam Chair, our next continued case is Sarah and Thomas Drozdowzewicz. 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 Um, one more time. Drozdowzewicz. <laughs> Drozdowzewicz, thank you. <laughs> and Denise Drozdowzewicz. <laughs> requesting a special permit to erect an addition to a non-conforming structure for an EFLA and a bonding to erect an addition to a non-conforming structure or garage in accordance with section 9.4 and section 3.1 of the Danvers Zoning Bylaws at 66 Wenham Street. Okay, come on up. Oh, we got somebody. Ken, do you want to sit on this? Sure. Okay. Rich, Ken, Ken will be on this. Okay. okay. Hello. Hi. Hi. Okay, so you already came here, right? Mm -hmm. I wasn't here, and actually, Corinne, you're going to be on this too. Okay. okay. Um, but this is all you submitted back to us for yeah, new so information? New, um, okay. So it's um, an additional 200 square feet in the Apple, making it 940. Okay, okay. So otherwise, this, that's the only change, yeah. right? Okay, okay. Um, all right. Um, where should we start? Quinn, you want to start? Do you have any anything else you want to, or just wait for questions? Okay. Got the whole family here. Yeah. <laughs> so, what is the additional square footage that you're adding to it? Um, so, adding to the catalog. Well, yes, adding be, because weren't you in compliance yeah, before? Yeah, seven forty, and now it's nine. For more space for long, long-term. Okay. All right. So I didn't compare the the two, but basically you're just enlarging the okay. rooms that you have. Okay. Okay. All right. No other questions. Thank you. Excuse me, Becky. You said Ken, but both of them, both of them, because I wasn't here. Okay. So you're not gonna hold up. Right. Yeah, so someone recommended that you enlarge the uh, bathroom so maybe someday a wheelchair can get in there. In the, in the hallway. Okay, and yeah, it looks like you've done that. Right. Yeah, they right. moved the bathroom to a different location to make it more accessible. Mm -hmm. All right, good. No other questions? Thank I have, you. I have right. no questions, Madam Chairman. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so in your updated plan, I only got a first floor plan. The second floor didn't change at all. So just the bottom floor is bumping out additional six feet, and the second floor is staying the same. On the original plan. It's okay. a second floor plan. Yeah, I got that. Yeah. 
Okay, and, and uh, you said the increase was by 200 square feet from the original. Yes. I, I have no further questions. Bob? Yeah, um, you bumped it out a little this way. Mm -hmm. Did you go that way too? No. No, so it's just, just the side. Back. Just back. You went back. Yes. Yeah, all right. And you originally here because your effluent conformed, but you had a non-conforming water. Existing. Existing. All right. Um, and this is the plan, the new one here with the red around it? Okay. I have no other questions. Madam Chair, before you go to the aisle, so I could go to the building inspector. So, Rich, they, they need both a finding and a special permit? Well, we're going up on the garage, right? Yep. That's the finding part. And now we need a special permit. If you have a, if you're putting an addition on for any lot, if there's any non-conforming on the property, that's the special, you need a special permit. That's right. the first one. Okay. And then they chose at the last meeting, they chose to come back and add on 200 square feet. That's a, that's the second part of the special permit. Okay. And so this meets setbacks? Yes. Okay. Even the side setback? Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Good. It's Thank a corner you. lot. Yeah. Yeah. Thirty on the front and the side, and twenty. Okay. So two two front setbacks. It meets both of them. Okay. Well, except for the corner of the garage that's already over. Oh, okay. that's that's corner. that's the non-conforming. Okay. Th that corner right there. The back corner. That's the that's the finding piece. And it's twenty-eight point seven to the corner. Okay. So it's just barely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah. Any comments from the building I mean, inspector? Tell, I guess it's no? Okay. Any comments or questions from the audience? Mm, nope. Okay. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I'm going to go back to the okay. board if you guys are ready. Um, I'm all set, and I will vote for this. I, I would vote for this, too. I will vote for this. Yeah, this is a modest change. I, I don't see a problem, but I would vote in favor. Okay. I'm sure your parents will be happy they get a few more. Yeah. A few more feet. Bob is the one who complained about the conformity last yeah. month. No, no, I know when, when it's my time. I want a big place. <laughs> <laughs> I'll vote for this. It's past your time. <laughs> okay, can I have a motion, please? We have it. Do you have the sheet? Madam Chairman, uh, this is a special permit. I move to grant the special permit in the code for section 9.3.3.2 of the zoning bylaws for an extended family living area as shown on the drawings. And the, I don't know, how do I date the drawing here? It's, uh, it says first floor plan. Submitted uh, May 22nd, 2019. All right, what he said. Um, <laughs> Shown in the drawings, this current structure is non-conforming as to front setbacks in section 9.3.3.3 for an oversized extended family living area. The municipal water and sewer shall not be overloaded by the EFLA. The public street shall not be overloaded by the EFLA. The value of other buildings and properties shall not be depreciated by the EFLA. The specific site is an appropriate location for the EFLA. The EFLA will not adversely affect the neighborhood. There will not be undue nuisance to vehicles or pedestrians. Inadequate and proper facilities will be provided to ensure the proper operation of the proposed EFLA. The proposed EFLA will be in harmony with the general purpose of the bylaw. Want to vote on I, that? I will, I will second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Anyone opposed? All right, the finding. Um, I move to grant the finding to add a second floor to a pre-existing non-conforming structure shown on the drawings. The addition will increase the non-conformity. Can I have a second? Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 I move to grant the finding as addition will not be substantially more detrimental than what currently exists. Can I have a second? I will second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Good luck. Good, Good luck. luck. Thank you very much. Seabridge, he'll come around in the hallway. <laughs> Okay, Madam Chair, we'll uh, go to the top of our agenda for the evening. Brian Armand, uh, docket 19-4819, requesting a dimensional variance for a side setback relief to five feet 
for a 16 by 24 garage in accordance with section 7 table 2 of the Danvers zoning bylaws at 89 Pine Street. Hi. Can you identify yourself, please? Sure. My name is Brian Armand. Okay. Uh, my friend is here with me. Um, we've lived at 89 Pine Street in the house that was built by my grandfather in 1950. Our children are the fourth generation um, still live there. Uh, at this stage, we think having a garage on the property will make things a little simpler for our lifestyle. Uh, we're looking to build a single car garage on the property. Uh, this is already a non-conforming lot. Uh, residential two requires a 15-foot side setback. The garage we have envisioned, the garage we have envisioned building would uh, require 12 would uh, require 12-foot setback at the front and a 5-foot setback at the rear corner. The specific hardships we have are the size and shape of the lot, the location of the house of the lot, and the topology of the lot. Uh, the proposed building is cited to minimize the impact on any existing trees and is actually designed to preserve an existing young hemlock that we have on the property that was planted by my grandparents. Uh, it's also designed to be aesthetically pleasing and consistent with the neighborhood. And the project does have the uh, support of the uh, Thank you. That's it? Yes. Okay. Okay. Bob? Uh, you've got this angled a little yes. bit. Can you, had you thought of moving it a little to the, to the right and pick up a few more um, feet? Well, so you mean in the, in the existing position by change that angle of the garage? Change it so that the five feet maybe becomes eight feet? Yeah, so what would happen is uh, we're designing the garage so that the front of the front facade of the garage would be in line with the house, right? So if we, if we turn the garage sideways or, or Angle, if you will, it would no, it would no longer be in line with the house. The house is large. Well, I know, but why, why did I understand the aesthetics? But you know, all garages aren't in line with houses, particularly those that are unattached. I mean, uh, could you move the garage back a little bit? Well, we did look at first off moving the garage back. I did include in the package, and I'm not sure if I made it in because it was a late edition, but um, from a topology standpoint, a topographic standpoint, the land starts to drop off immediately down. So you end up in a situation where you move the brush back, you have a considered foundation, considerable foundation being built, a foundation wall probably in the back. Um, so that's moving it back along that line, it, it wouldn't really be practical for us. All right, um, I, I'm going to be honest, I don't like the five feet, but we'll, I'll listen to the rest of the board. Okay. Thanks, uh, Madam Chair. Uh, if I could go to the building inspector. Rich, what, um, by, by right, what size garage do we allow? Any size. Or is there any size? Uh, it's like 1,200 square feet, 30 by 40. 30 by 40, yeah. Okay. And, um, <clears throat> Simon, is the, the, the what's the distance between the deck proposed distance? Is that five feet between yes, the deck and the garage? Feet from the deck to the side of the garage. Did you consider a garage slightly shorter than 24 to maybe pick up some feet as Bob uh, indicated? Um, certainly, yes. Um, what I tried to do was construct something that wouldn't be overbearing for the lot in that particular spot. I mean, you you were at the house, you saw it's kind of where the living happened, right? The in and out of the house, it's all right there, so. Um, I, I didn't want to create something that was too large. I, I think the 16 wide, by the way, is probably a standard nowadays for what you would have for a garage, right? Um, the, the length of it, I, I suppose I could, I could reconsider that, certainly. Okay. Well, I'm, I'm just thinking, like, say, at 20 feet, what would that do to the setback, the rear really setback? Wouldn't buy you much, though. Wouldn't buy a whole lot. A couple of feet, though, right? I mean, that's all we're really looking for. Looking for three feet. All right, well, that was all. That's my question. Thank you. Yeah, yeah I, Madam Chairman, I, I really don't have too many questions. We're, we're struggling with this because we typically will yield maybe up to a half in certain situations where the topology is really tough. We yield like half of the setback. We really don't want to go shorter than that, but I'll say that for my comments. <laughs> <laughs> so the, the board, I would imagine, does the board appreciate the fact that the garage itself would be 12 feet at the front? 
you're seven and a half feet if that's half, right? That, that would happen two thirds of the way back. So we understand the, that. The, the, yeah. the majority of that side setback would actually be beyond seven and a half feet. Right we understand. We understand. Okay, Ken? Um, I, I have no other questions from what they touched upon. I have one question. I was out to um, view the lot. Is there a shed or another structure that's there now? There's a shed there that will be torn down. Okay, and, and how far away is that? I didn't actually go get out to measure. How far away is that from the side setbacks? That is less than five feet from the side setback. I discovered as part of this project when I had the uh, surveying that that shed is not <clears throat> and, and how big is that shed now? That's eight by ten. Eight by ten. And is it further back? So, in other words, when when it's along that line, actually the, the line, the, the, the lot line. line goes like this. Yeah. So, so it, it's actually um, most of it is 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 closer to um, to the to it, it's closer to the five foot section is what I'm saying. That that shed is actually built along the property line. Okay. Okay. So so it's the back of the shed. I know you're talking about. the back of the shed is is a little further back and a little closer than the garage. Would be. Okay. And of course the side of the garage would be that square. So oh, I know. Okay. I'm just trying to visualize where the garage was going to go in yeah. relation to where the shed is now. So, so what you're saying is it's actually going to be a little bit further away. Yes. Okay. Yes. The back corner, did you, so did you get out and look? I, well, I stopped in front of your house and looked, but Sorry, I didn't so actually get out and walk the property. The back corner of the shed, I have it marked off. The back corner of the shed is, I mean, I'm sorry, the back corner of the proposed garage is actually like in the shed. Okay. So you can see three points of the proposed garage, the fourth is in the shed. So okay. Okay. All right. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Um, on the garage, is there going to be an overhang at all? Like there is, I, I, I came out there and met with you, obviously, and we walked the lot line and looked at the shed. And um, the, sh the shed that's there, um, I know you have this existing plot plan, but it's not on here. I, I'm surprised it's not on here. Um, but it does have an overhang. Uh, yes. The, the, will the new garage have an overhang? It, it would not have an overhang that would be within that five foot seven. I recognize that the overhang cannot be inside uh, the setback. So if, if, if it has an overhang, it will not be there. Honestly, I haven't drawn final plans because if I don't get approval for this, um, I'm not going to do it. So, uh, it, is a, it does have an overhang. Yeah, it's yeah, got an that, overhang. And that, yes, that is not necessarily representative of what we can do or what we would do because of the overhang can't be within the setback. Okay? So if you're, if you're pointing out to me that I can't have an overhang within the setback, I recognize that. Okay, but this garage is how big? 16 by 24 feet with the overhang, the overhang without, would not, without it. The overhang would not be within the setback. Okay. So you're saying so, that would be 16 by 24, including the overhang? Yes. Okay, that's what you said. Yeah, but that's not what this garage is. The garage is. It's only to the. Not including the overhang. It's not including the overhang. I see. So I, I'm just um, on this plan. Did you, did you draw this plan yourself from this? You blew this I up. Took, I took that. Okay. Right, so it. this isn't an engineered plan of of the lot lines, right? The the drawing in your left hand is the is the surveyor's plan. Okay. The one on the right is merely representation. Okay. Okay. Because typically what we like is an engineered plan, especially if we're close to a lot line, mm -hmm. um, so that somebody's not building on somebody else's land. And we've, it's happened that we've had requests an engineered plan and found out that what they originally proposed was in somebody else's yard. Okay. So, um, so we would not accept this as a you know, a plan for the construction, but so you would not accept that as a plan. And, and I wouldn't. Get, Maybe the board would, but I wouldn't. I'm speaking only speaking for myself. Yeah. But you would not accept that for the purposes of, of this um, of my application, or for the purposes of granting a permit. Well, they're one and the same. Both. Right? Did, did, okay. Did, did the survey looks like the pinhole in the back? Did the survey put the stake in the front corner? 
Uh, no, but all the states were there. Right, so we can, we can pull, a, say the board grants relief, we can actually pull a string down the line and confirm oh, if, yeah. you, if you're gonna build something. Exactly. So we could actually just superimpose to scale drawing on the certified as built. Yes. To okay. answer, answer your question, yeah. we, okay. have enough, okay. we have enough good data. Because he just, he took this and blew this up. I understand, yeah. but we do have a certified as built. Okay. And we do have the property line okay. stakes so we can confirm if the board granted relief. We can okay. confirm a really good sign. Where it is, yeah. okay. All right. And, um, and the shed that's, it's not on here, but it was there when the surveyor did the. Did Correct. you just white? Did you just white it out? No, Is that the surveyor did not draw the shed on that land. Why not? I, I don't know. If I if I knew that was going to be a question here, I would have asked him, but I was not aware that that would be. A question. I never heard of a surveyor not putting a structure on a plan. Yeah, it doesn't make sense. Okay, um, those are all my questions. Are there any other questions from the board? I have one other question. How long has the shed been there? Oh, uh, 1998. Well, did did they need to get a permit back then for the shed since it was so close? His grandfather, no. Yeah, but we, no, no, yes. no. But but in yes. other words, they, yeah. So they they are. Yeah. They must have come in front of <clears throat> this board to have the shed. Do you not think? Not necessarily. Okay. All right. <laughs> No, we did a zoning check, so there's no zoning on the property. Okay. So the shed's done. Didn't have a permit for It was constructed without a permit. Oh, but it's, it's a grandfather now for 10 years. Yeah. Well, so yeah, but it was still constructed. <laughs> okay, any other questions from the board? No. Okay, any questions or comments from the audience? Mr. Mr. Duggan. Duggan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Matthew Duggan, Town Meeting Member, Precinct 1. Just a couple of questions. First, uh, with the property itself, what's the square footage of this lot? Do you know, just offhand? It's about a half an acre. Half an acre. Okay. And can we just talk a little bit about what the hardship is for in terms of the topology of the land? Like, what what um, is the what is the reasoning that it needs to be so close to a... Uh, to the lot line? Well, do you have, want to answer, you answer that? that? Yeah, yeah, the answer to the board. And, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, um, actually, can you repeat the question? Yeah. Can you it's, repeat it's the question? The, you mentioned a hard, I heard uh, the mention of a hardship earlier uh, that uh, related to the topology of the land. I think the rear of the lot had some type of drop off. I just wanted some clarification on what that was and perhaps the uh, what the actual footage is of the drop off okay yes I, i'm not a, I, I can't comment with the specifics as to how it drops off um but i can tell you that as you proceed back from the site of the, where the garage would be the land starts to drop down in the back which would require if you slid the garage back along the property line it would require a more significant structure to be built in order to create a garage there okay I think you were more specific in your hardship when you presented yes, your case. Yes, the size of the lot. Uh, that, I think that's what he wants to hear. Okay, so, so the, it's already a non-conforming lot. It's a smaller lot. Uh, the location of the house on the land uh, and its quality. And quite frankly, the fact that the lot is not square to the, to the house, right? As you can see in the drawings, that right. the property line goes along at an angle. Uh, so there's de decreasing space between the house and the lot line as the lot line proceeds back. Okay, and so next question is, with the physical location of the, the planned garage, it's to the uh, left side of the uh, house yeah. facing from the street? Yes. So it's in close proximity to these uh, homes on Loris Road? What, uh, what's, the, what's the distance to the nearest uh, structure uh, in terms of a nearby house or a garage. Do we have an approximate distance? It's 40 feet. <coughs> He's estimating 40 feet. 40 feet. Okay. There's a big house to the left yeah. before you hit Loris Road. Yeah. Okay, the uh, the actual structure itself, I heard uh, mentioned that it was a 401 car garage. So 
uh, 16 by 24. That's a that's almost the footprint of a house. So you could fit fit four cars in there. Um, is there any other plans for this structure besides storing one car? No. No. It takes the place of a shed. Okay. Sounds like a, you know this is a this is a considerably sized building in in comparison to what's nearby. Um, how about uh, we have 16 by 24 for the width and the the length. How about the height? Can we talk about the uh, height of the structure from the ground? Feet. How many feet? 15. 15 feet high. Okay. At the peak. At the peak. And so uh, do you, Madam Chair, there'll be a access to a uh, second floor? There'll be a second floor to this structure? No, there's going to be second floor. Uh, a, a building of that height wouldn't really be fitting or appropriate in this space. There's a, uh, we have a nice deck there, and to build a large structure of higher uh, height would be a detraction from the atmosphere of the deck. Sounds like there's enough room for a second floor. That's why I ask, because we've seen in the past where um, it starts out as a single story building, but with the height at 15 feet, that's, uh, it could, we can only go by what he's saying. Yeah, I ended, I'm, saying, I'm just, you know, I'm yeah. just mentioning that. Yeah, and it would probably only be in the very center of it because right. there's no dormers. Yeah, that's 15 feet to the ridge. I mean, so at the eaves, you're talking about. All right, just the ten inch ceiling joist, and yeah, it's not, not much room. You're lucky if you have six feet underneath the ridge, and then it just drops off. Yeah. Yep, yeah, that's fine. I'm just curious. And then, uh, can you uh, repeat again what the overhang would be? in terms of the the rafters? I haven't designed the final software plan, but it is not sit within the five foot setback. So I'm trying to picture what a roof looks like that doesn't have any overhang on it. It doesn't. Well, he's saying it would have an overhang. This is it. So the overhang is, so it's five feet from the overhang? That's or what five feet from yeah. the wa yeah. vertical wall? Five feet from the overhang. Can I? May I ask the uh, building inspector a question? Sure. Can you comment on the design of a garage that would have a very, very limited overhang? How much space that would be? Yeah, there's some, you know, there's a lot of capes around here that was built in the 50s that have zero overhang. Uh, there's quite a few, actually. Um, so it's possible to build a structure with uh, near zero overhang? Yeah, pretty much just the, uh, you know, the, the, the fascia just where it drifts over the um, side. Right. So yeah, there's certainly a possibility for zero, pretty much zero overhang. Okay, that's all I have, Madam Chair. Thank you. Other than the fact that uh, 16 by, uh, was it 24? That's uh, that's large. You could put four cars in there easily. Well, parking space is usually 9 by 18, at least according to our bylaws. So. Yeah, but it's a garage. So. Yeah, I understand. Okay. All right, thank, thank you. you. Any other questions or comments from the audience? No. Okay. Back to the board. Uh, I won't vote for this if it's five feet. Okay. Yeah, I think that's a little tight. Um, I think if it was a slightly smaller structure, maybe that would pick up a couple of feet. Um, I'd certainly be willing to work with the applicant to come up with some some happy medium here. Okay. Um, I'm not really happy with the five feet either. I'm torn though. I mean, he's got a tight spot and it's, it's, it's a tough, it's a tough spot, but I'd like to see a few more feet. Okay. Ken? Yeah, me as well. I think five's too little, maybe at least seven. I'd like to see to half of the 15, seven and a half would be good, but I'd probably compromise with seven. I agree. But I think we're willing to work if you can kind of. Yeah. So, so, so okay. let me make my comments. Yes, and um, so I, th I think that the structure could be twisted. And I think there's a huge backyard. If, if it was attached to the house, then you didn't have, don't have as much flexibility. But I, in my opinion, there's a huge backyard. It's not attached to the house anyway. And I think you have an opportunity to even 
twist the structure so to get away from the lot line. So um, I would I would like to see it a little bit further from the lot line also. So now you can say what you want to say. <laughs> so can I ask the board their uh, opinion on seven? Um, I'm going to say that I, I don't still understand how you're going to do a 16 by 24 structure with an overhang and then figure out how to still fit it in that spot, even with seven feet. I, okay. I'm confused by that. So I would need a better explanation. My personally, I would need a better explanation how you're going to do that because the structure you're proposing has probably a two foot overhang on each side, plus it's 16 by 24. Um, I think probably the board would go halfway, but I'm not sure. I would have to pull the board. What are you proposing? That uh, the, the building would not be inside of a seven foot setback. Okay. So my application was for five. It sounds like the board didn't want to accept five. Right. Uh, but there was some suggestion as to seven. As I stand here and think in my head how I can go with seven, I, I, I would consider that, but I'd like to know if the board. Okay. So my suggestion would be to continue this and figure out how you're going to do that. Mm -hmm. um, continue it to the next meeting. Okay. Um, because we do need a plan unless you know exactly how you're going to do that right now. Mm -hmm. Okay, so, so I'll request a continuance. You want to do that? Yeah. Okay. And, right. So move, Madam Chair. Uh, and it can't be the next meeting is uh, after that, Madam Chair, is July fifteenth. July fifteenth. Okay. 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 <laughs> <laughs> Go farther if you want. <laughs> <laughs> um, does the board want to make any other comments at this point? Well, I do think you have two choices. You can either reduce the size of the building or move it somewhere that's away from um, the lot line. Or tilted. Uh, 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 well, I'm not sure if tilting because you want to be able to drive in your driveway and be able to drive in and not, you know, I don't yeah. know if you have teenage drivers, that might not work. <laughs> <laughs> but, but those are your two choices, to reduce the, the, the footprint of the building or to kind of move it. Yeah. So that's what I would look at doing. Madam Chair, I do would just make the comment that whatever he does, so we get those drawings uh, prior. Yeah, and we're going to um, ask, we, we're having a problem getting, uh, we used to always have a noon on Thursday deadline before the meeting, yeah. and um, Kathy's working. been putting it in the mail, and we're not getting it until like 3 or 4 o'clock on the day of the hearing, so I think we'll move it back a day, so is Wednesday, that all right? Yeah. Is there any problem with that? Tuesday. Yeah. Tuesday? Tuesday, yeah. Yeah, the U.S. Postal Service is not helping us out. Yeah, yeah. No, I just got my updated. I mean, unless you guys want to drive around and put it in our mailboxes, well, but we, I mean, we don't want to commit to that either. Okay. <laughs> so I guess. That All right. Would, uh, so the Tuesday, Tuesday to, at noon, the okay. prior to the July fifteenth meeting. Okay, I don't know. I can tell you what day that is. Like what? Uh, you need that a motion the to continue. Ninth. Ninth? The ninth. The ninth. By July okay. 9th. All right. Okay. Motion to continue to July 15th. Can I have a second? I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Thank you. Thanks. Thank you. Bye. All right, Madam Chair, this is our final case of the evening. No, it's, we have uh, two. two. Oh, I guess uh, two separate, I guess. Uh, Netflix Productions, docket 19-4821, requesting a special permit for a temporary movie television production in accordance with section 9.1.H of the Danvers Zoning Bylaws at 18 Ledgewood Drive. Hi. Hi. Hi, uh, I'm Charlie Harrington, Greg Kyoto with the location managers on the movie. Okay. And uh, we plan uh, to shoot uh, five days in mid-July and two days in, at the end of July at uh, 18 and 20 Ledgewood. Okay, so I just want to be sure who's here, the applicant, is neither of them are here? Oh, I didn't know they needed to be here. I thought you were the applicant. We got letters. We got letters, right? Yeah, we got letters. 
Yeah. Well, I'll make sure that they agree. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Huh? I'll make sure the homeowners agree. Sometimes the sign companies will come in here and they'll want to put a sign up and they won't even, like, they'll just, like, decide they're going to put a sign up for somebody. Yeah. Yeah. So we just kind of like the authorization. So. We have consent letters, yeah, which I see. Okay, so go ahead. We're we're listening. Uh, it's uh, Adam Sandler comedy. Okay. And, um, we have some day and night work. We have a couple. Of okay. Days. Did you get their names? And yeah, you got it. Okay. So I think probably the best thing to do is I see that there's a range of dates in your application. But give us an idea. It says that you're going to be shooting day and night. What does that mean? How are you going to tie up the street? Is there going to be lighting? What is the impact on the neighborhood? Because I'm sure there are a few people here that are going to ask those questions. So why don't we ask them first? Yeah. yeah. Uh, there's two ways we can do it. We can do what we call ITC, Intermittent Traffic Control. We're going to have small kids. It's a, a movie about Halloween. Okay. We're going to have small kids trick-or-treating, small kids riding bikes on the street. Uh, so we would like to work out with the police that we put a police detail at either end of the street, uh, at least what we can see from the house. Okay. And uh, let, allow residents to come through and, um, and close it to other traffic. Okay. And what would... And that would only be for like the exterior scene. There's a bunch that happens inside the houses and we wouldn't need to do that for that, that work. Okay. All right. Um, that's we'll, we'll, we'll flyer the whole neighborhood uh, and talk to everybody and everybody in the immediate area we're going to be requesting to decorate their house with Halloween uh, stuff and they'll Okay. I mean, I can see two people going two ways. You know, I can see people saying, "This is really exciting." I They're this gonna is go happening all out. on my street, and I'm excited. And I can see people saying, "I don't want any part of this. I don't want that going on in my neighborhood." So, yeah. I mean, we've just changed our bylaws, which you probably know. We only allowed um, movie production on commercial properties, and uh, now this is the first time that. And Someone is come in front of this board. Uh, yes. To, pigs. Yeah. <laughs> so we're a little green in terms of knowing how to handle this too. Yeah, in that it, this is the, in a lot in Massachusetts. Yeah. And, uh, the first residential property. So yeah. we go and we knock on the doors and okay. And we take friends with everyone yeah. possibly can. Yeah. And like I said, so we're learning along be, with you. A lot of the people besides the two houses will be getting paid. We want to put lights in their yard. Okay. We want to decorate their house, and they'll get a check for that. So that that, that helps a lot. <laughs> you want to check out my neighborhood? <laughs> uh, all right, I'm gonna go ahead to Corinne. And, um, I'm, I'm sure one of the, the most important questions that the neighbors will have is, what are your hours for filming? Like, it, would you film until 11 o'clock at night? Are you going to have the big lights up? Um, uh, there'll be two nights where we'll want to film all night. Okay. And that's, uh, we, we go away for two weeks and then we come back for two days at the end of July, and those are the days we'd want to do it. I think they're currently on Thursday and Friday. Okay. At the end of July. Yeah. That's the night work outside. Okay. Yeah. So that's the kids running around with their trick or treating? Uh, no, that's actually in the backyard of the oh. two houses. Okay. Um, uh, yeah, all the, all the stuff with the kids riding the bikes and trick or treating will do probably at dusk. Okay. Our schedule is a little bit kind of up in the air right now, but um, it's, it's seven days of work and at least two night scenes. There might be other days where we uh, shoot night scenes as well, but not all night. Okay. I don't have the specifics of the times right now. Okay. Ken? So what, what if uh, someone doesn't want to put light, have you put lights up in there? Um, then we figure it out some other way. Okay. <laughs> or if somebody wants too much money, we figure it out another way. Yeah, yeah, just sort of shoot on a different angle or something. Yeah, yeah. there's always a way to do it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> All right. That no, sounds pretty exciting. I, I don't have any uh, other questions. Okay. I don't have any questions, Madam Chairman. 
Um, thanks, Madam Chair. So, um, I'm guessing you're going to be running some generators. Um, what types and of we generators? Usually get, we usually get permits for those. Uh, uh, what types of generators? Are they diesel? Yeah, they are diesel. They're baffled uh, for sound because we, we don't want to hear them with our microphones, so they're super quiet. Okay. And we try to place them in a place where the exhaust isn't bothering anyone. And um, so you mentioned two nights out overnight all uh, so what about the days like what's the typical day is that at 7 a.m. or 8 a.m. Yeah. 9 a.m. 7 a.m. and it's about a 12 hour event so 7 to 7 daily yes okay and you talked about intermittent traffic control so how far away would the detail police be set up I think that streets a dead end isn't it Ledgewood? no, no. it's a long no. street it goes around to Strabay yeah. so how far from 18 well, and number 20 I think, is I, think it's the, I don't know if it continues but I think it's the I'd want to put somewhere at either end of the street the very end yeah okay and um so, so. and I, I guess a I know you said you really don't have the schedule held down, but I would want, especially if I were a neighbor, never mind sitting on this board, but I wouldn't want s specific dates. So when do you plan to start? And it says in your application July 8th, but it doesn't sound like that's really a real date. Uh, I was kind of avoiding in a public forum telling everybody where we're going to be when, but I can give you those specifics. If it's well, I think it's important to make for us to be able to make a decision based on to it. Keep the press. Is that eight million people will show up? <laughs> well, we, we get looking we'll have a lot of people, and we'll have a few hundred people show up if it's yeah. in the newspaper or the public forum. But if it's necessary, well, you're on TV right now. I know that, <laughs> so. and I haven't given them a specific date yet. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so I, I guess I understand. You can that. show them to us. Okay, <laughs> yeah. Um, I don't have any further questions at this time. Okay. Bob? Why these two houses? What's special about them? I'm just curious. I, I took a ride by there and I just look like two ordinary houses, houses. In the middle of a street. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I don't know. It's a really sweet street. We wanted something that was more wooded and not take open lawns, something that had some shade. Uh, the proximity of the two houses to each other is something that was desirable for us. Um, uh, one of the trees had to be big enough to hang a, a, a person from. It's like a fake gag of someone is hanging. Well, a we tree, hope it's so fake. Have a tree that's quite <laughs> big enough. There was a lot of conditions, and we actually. So I'm just started. curious, how somebody just ride around town, or do you have? Uh, yeah, we rode around ten towns. Yeah. Oh, okay. And, and these two houses just stuck out. Yeah, the production designer's in charge of a look at the movie, and um, and he, he liked the proximity of the two. Okay, I was just curious, you know, out of all the houses in town, why these two, you know? Yeah. And you were got lucky that people that own both houses seem like great people, so yeah. you never know what you're going to get when you knock on the door. <laughs> yeah. I got Bob. Could have been. <laughs> you might have got a yes at my house. <laughs> I don't have any other questions. All right. Um, I don't really have any questions right now. Do you have anything else you want to say before I go to the audience? People are going to have comments. No. Okay. Who would like questions or comments? All right. Go ahead. If you would go to the microphone, identify yourself and where you live, please. I'm Delphine Skillens. I live at 13 Ledgewood Drive, okay. a couple houses down on the opposite side. Okay. I'm very concerned about the overnight noise, about the traffic, about people coming and trying to see Adam Sandler and the other stars, and what it's going to do to a very quiet neighborhood. Um, you know, you're talking about not being able to easily get in and out of my own home. No, I would make sure that, that uh, all If you've got please detail at the I mean it's an inconvenience for anybody on the street. And I am consider I am concerned that it doesn't become a zoo. You mm -hmm. know. Everybody's heard that oh Adam Sandler's coming to town. You think they're not gonna know. People are gonna know. The, the, you're gonna have to tell the neighbors it's gonna get out. There's gonna be all kinds of traffic and craziness going on. Yeah, I mean we'll like I said Two of us personally will go around and knock on every door, give them a flyer with our phone number and our cell phone numbers. If there's any concerns, any handicap access issues, anybody with any special needs, and we, our job is to work that out. 
What about, you know, bright lights at night filming? There's going to be production traffic. I mean, You're production. Close to it, so I, at night, the light, you'll notice the lights outside your window. We, we can obviously avoid trying to shine them in your window. And, uh, and sometimes we hang black drapes near the lights. But you talk in the middle of the summer. Personally, I don't use air conditioning. I sleep with my windows open. You know, it's, it's I got to go get up and go to work in the morning. So it's, it's a concern. It's a definite concern. I guess concern. Um, maybe to help her out a little bit, how many nights do you think it would be that you would have those lights shining? You are. You have a schedule, I know. So. He said two. Right? He said two, two overnights. It's two overnights. Let's see what other nights work. We have um, all the night work inside the house. We just put black drapes over the house and shoot inside. Pretend it's night. What about trucks and wait, wait, you know wait, everything? Let, let him look this up and then. what we call a split, and that's, we'll shoot some day scenes, it's maybe noon to midnight, it's maybe 11 to 11, it could be two to two, that's the kind of information I don't have right now. But uh, Estimate, yeah. like five days, 10 days? No, that's I mean, only one other day besides the two nights. One other day other than the two nights. Right. Okay, because you're giving us d July 8th to August 30th, which is almost two months. But you're saying that the impact would probably the be span of our film right, situation. like well, yeah, because we go away for two or three weeks and come back for those two nights. So three three nights total that there might be bright lights and generators, or uh, less than five, less than ten, less than five, less than five. Yeah. Okay. That gives you an idea. And, and it's five more than I want. <laughs> I know. Yeah, I understand. I mean, if you uh, if you feel like you can't get to sleep, go to sleep and get to work on time and all that stuff, I could put you in a hotel with expenses. But, uh, well, it's not real convenient. That's what we do sometimes, or if somebody has babies. Or what about whatever. like production vehicles and stuff on the street? It's not a super wide street. Now, when a car is parked on the street. You, you, there's not enough room for two two way traffic. So if you've got a bunch of production trucks parked on the street all day and all night when you're filming, it's going to be a very congested area for people to get in and out. There's a lot of children in the neighborhood, a lot of young children, kids who like to ride their bikes and in stuff um, because it's a quiet. It's generally a very quiet neighborhood, and kids are allowed to ride their bikes on the street and stuff. Yeah. I mean, it's a very nice neighborhood, and we'd like to keep it that way. At least I would. <laughs> Okay. Um, I think he's given you as much as he wants, and, but you've given him your opinion too, which we appreciate that. Do you want to say something? I very much want to say Go ahead. Go to the mic. Hi, I'm Jay Demarcus. I live directly next door at 22. Okay. Um, and my concern was mostly the date, um, limiting the circus that will go on um and of course the night the night we have a couple of kids and i have to get up for work the next day and things of that nature that was really our big concern um in terms yeah and right and it's it's really the how you guys will handle the crowds that will inevitably turn up anyway um you know the days of, the days of it you know his social media hits there instantly i mean they, they see the trucks on the street and that you, know, you guys know better than I do, I'm sure, yeah. how fast it happens. That's my biggest concern. Um, and we'll have the police in our production, when you're shooting exteriors, I mean, they would basically, if you didn't live on the street, okay. you would be okay. held at either end of the street. Okay, okay. So, nobody can have visitors? It's... Uh, yeah, I mean, I always work this out. Yeah. I mean, if you okay. want visitors, I can work as that out. As long as you're accessible to us. I just don't want it to become a zoo for right. either one of you guys. Right. Right. I want to let the neighborhood watch and right. have fun with it if we can, and if okay. they're not in our shot. Right. Uh, but we don't right. want it to become a zoo either. Right. Okay. That, that was my biggest couple of concerns. I just, and uh, you're, if you're looking at the yeah. houses, you're the yeah. house just to the right? I'm um, to the right. If you're looking at 20, um, directly to the right. It's, uh, yeah, it's the tan house. Yep. 
Yep. So I figure there'll be a lot going on. I'm right next door. There is. Yeah. You'll probably want to put lights in your yard. Yeah. Yeah. So. Happy Halloween. Yeah. There you go. In July. Yeah. And I'll make sure okay. you guys have our cell phone numbers. Okay. If you say this is going on, it's not working for me, then we'll okay. try to correct it. I think they want to do more movies in yeah. Danvers. And we, I don't know if you know what happened, but um, a movie company tried to shoot at a residential house here last year, we two years ago. Years ago. Okay. Yeah, two and years, they were so. shut down because we only allow movie sh uh, production in commercial properties like Denny's where they okay. shot sure. on Endicott Street, sure. okay? Sure. So they shut them down because they were not allowed to shoot in a residential property. So the bylaws have changed and now right. they're coming back and they're saying they want to shoot in residential properties. So right. that's Right. what's going on here and we're yeah. new to this too right. so we're learning as you're right. learning not super uh, excited it's, it's <laughs> me that gets the first go next door but so but, we're hoping yeah. that this goes well right. and they know what they're doing right. because if right. the next person right. comes and it doesn't go well right. we're not going to allow it again sure. so right. um they want it to right. go well and we right do i'm sure they do yeah, yeah. Okay. So. I need references from a previous town. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Mr. Duggan. Thank you, Madam Chair, Matthew Duggan, Town Meeting Member, Precinct One. Just a couple of things. Um, the hours. So I heard uh, the hours were overnight. So what does that actually mean? Does that mean? throughout the overnight or is it just like late into the like midnight or one can can we get a clarification on what that might yeah, look I mean, like the nights are short this time of year uh as the days are long so uh we would probably show up at six or seven in the evening and as soon as it's dark enough at 8 15 8 30 we would film until it got light out at 5 15 i think is what it looks up to Okay, so overnight. Okay, that's fine. And then uh, the second thing was about the power, right? So uh, diesel generators, is there a, a possible alternative? We have a municipal electric company here in Danvers. Would it be possible to get like a temporary drop off a pole and use like a 220 connection or is it the, that wouldn't be sufficient, that amount of power? Well, yeah. I Go ahead. So it's, it's, I think the generators are designed, I'm not an expert on it, but they're specifically designed to not, to have a very even flow, to not affect the lights on camera. Um, and the generators that we're going to be using are uh, the, the cab generators on the tractor trailer. So they'll be running off their own diesel fuel. Um, so that's, that's the All right. Yeah, so just it would just be uh, one would be the noise. I think I heard uh, that would be, be muffled, uh, so that may not be an issue unless you're close by. But what about the, uh, the fumes? Because, you know, in the summer, the neighbor mentioned having the windows open, so yeah. sometimes diesel fumes can travel uh, a distance. The, the, the exhaust is baffled in shop upward, um, so usually if, you, if we're more than, you know, if we're parked in the street, you know, if a resident does, Okay, that's fine. Easily, easily. That's fine. And then the, just the one last thing, uh, we talked about having uh, detailed police officers for traffic control, um, and I heard some concerns about crowds showing up. How, how would, how would the town manage uh, the crowds? Would they allow uh, them to pass by this? Uh, barrier that would be set up at each end of the street would there be a restriction on who could actually go past the police officers up into this area well um can you wait a second i'm gonna ask the building inspector i mean is this something that we should have the the police chief comment on before we approve it or do you have you had a conversation with him or uh, okay do you think this is something we should get his opinion on? Or, I mean, I wasn't involved in this change in the bylaws, so I don't really know 
what conversation took place with regard to... Yeah, well, they would, they would pay for police details. And, yeah. Uh, certainly, you know, that's their prerogative to keep the neighborhood quiet, so... I mean, we've had m movies filmed in Danvers before and on yeah, more prominent streets where people could easily access very the Very recently, yeah. Denny's, they shot down at Denny's recently. They shot up at the Rebecca Nurse House multiple times. Yeah. Uh, they shot at the uh, Knights Inn. Yeah. And, and those are huge. major highways that people could easily even get all, to. We, even all over town. We don't, like I shot at the Rebecca Nurse House, we didn't have one person come by. Uh, okay. Uh, I'm not that worried, you know. The first day they're like, oh, this is cool. The yeah. second day, the third day, like, when are you people going to leave? You know? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Like, this is boring standing around waiting yeah, for the yeah, next exactly. shot. They're yeah, okay. The exterior scene, they're just watching our trucks park. Okay, you know? all right. So I'm not too worried about the overcrowd. I, I would go with whatever the advice the police chief gave us. Okay. Yeah, that's fine. I'll Is defer. that a fair answer? Yeah, yeah, I'll defer to the applicant. It sounds like he has many years of experience. Yeah. I'm just trying to, I'm just imagine like a worst case scenario where right. the neighbors have, you know, people in their front yards trampling around. Uh, right. That's the, like a worst case, but it sounds like that's not really uh, something that's a common thing for for this. So, all right, that's all I have. Thank you Thank very you. much. I have uh, two follow-up questions. Okay. Good. Um, so you mentioned uh, we've been talking a little bit about generators. Typically, how many generators are we talking about? Two. two. Probably two, yeah. And we keep talking about the crowds and the public and neighbors, which are the most important here, but how many people is your production company? How many pickup trucks slash workers, set builders are showing well, up on a given day? Most of our big trucks in a, a nearby parking lot, like a school or a uh, we usually use school or church. So you kind of shuttle in. people in? And then we shuttle them in. And but, but so how big is your crew? Is it a crew of 30? Is it a crew of uh, 20? 65 people 65. around camera. Okay. Wow. Wow. That's a lot of people. Um, and then, of course, that's not actors and whatnot. That's just your working crew. That's right. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions from the board? Yeah, they could pack at the prep. Huh? <laughs> yeah. Uh, maybe not. They're redoing some. Yeah. I just got a notice today that they're redoing ball fields and closing mm. some parking lots for some. Uh, then go to the other school. Where did I start? Here, there. Yeah, Corinne. I think you started with me. Okay. All right. We're going to go to deliberation and see what everybody thinks. All right. Okay. <laughs> Go ahead. Are, are we doing both houses at the same uh, time? Yeah, we, we, uh, read the second we can notice, read the second notice so we can do them both at the same time. Want me to do that now? Yeah. Uh, Madam yes, Chair, please. this is uh, a second case uh, related to our first case here of Netflix Productions, docket number 19-4822, requesting a special permit for a temporary movie slash television production in accordance with section 9.1.H of the Dan there's zoning bylaws at 20 Ledgewood Drive. Okay, great. So yes. I will vote for this. Okay. I would vote for this too. I, it sounds like you're gonna work with the neighbors if there's any issues and take care of them. So I'll, I'll vote for this. I will vote for this. Okay, John? Yeah, I agree with you, Madam Chair. I mean, this is kind of my first time through this. Uh, clearly the town voted in favor to allow this to happen. I would hope that the production company works with the neighbors and uh, phone numbers and whatnot are exchanged. So I, I, I think uh, hopefully it'll go well and I'll, I'm in favor of it. Okay. Well, I will vote for this because this is a pilot project. You will or won't? I will. Okay. Because this is a pilot project and I want to see how it turns out so we know what to do when the next <laughs> group comes in. Seriously. When it comes back. It's not always <laughs> as complicated because well, we sometimes don't close the street we, we want to hear from the neighbors when the next group comes in and see whether you did what you said you were going to do or you didn't do what right. you did. And so... We're uh, learning in... In all yeah. reference to the neighbors, I understand, but I want to see what happens so that this will give us information for the next time. Okay. So, yes, I will vote for this. Okay. And um, I would also vote for this. I'm just going to ask everyone if there are any contingencies or restrictions that you would want to put on the approval and the, also the building inspector if there's anything specific that you think. 
No, we, we reviewed everything that what you know what they're going to do. The okay. Structure okay. And, and, uh, so really, it's a test of the new bylaw. So. Yeah, I would, I would just. Hopefully, everything goes smooth. And let's test it. I, I would just ask that they limit the generator use as much as you can. I know those things need to be on and running, but if there's a chance to shut we'll them down. Be careful about the place, though. Yeah. I know noises, if I was unable, would be a concern. They're very quiet, though. Yeah. They're very quiet. Awesome. I mean, that's even better. So. Okay. Okay. All right. So can I have a motion? I make a motion to, I move to grant the special permit in accordance with Section 9.1.8 of the Zoning Bylaw for temporary movie TV production. Uh, the municipal water and sewer shall not be overloaded by this temporary use. The public street shall not be come overloaded by this temporary use. The value of other buildings and properties shall not be depreciated by the temporary use. The specific sites and appropriate location for the temporary use. Temporary use will not adversely affect the neighborhood. Well, I don't know about that. <laughs> there will not be undue nuisance to vehicles or pedestrians, and adequate and proper facilities will be provided to ensure the proper operation of the proposed temporary use. The proposed temporary use will be in harmony with the general purpose of the bylaw. Can I have a second? Do we need to mention that that's for both of those? Oh, this is for 18 and 20 Ledgewood Drive. Right, and uh, Ken will be voting on 18 and Corinne will be voting on 20. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? All right. Good luck. Good luck. Make us proud. Well. Make yeah. us yeah. proud, all right? Good luck. This is it. <laughs> yeah. Can't Screw wait to up. see it. I think you need to give that lady at number 13 a part in the movie. Yeah. Well, it's fun to watch movies. Uh, yeah. Can I have a motion to adjourn? Oh, move. Yeah. Second. Because yeah. the kids Good night, are like, Good night, Danvers. Aye, aye, aye. aye.